uh, at this stage, uh, there is also in India, especially concerns about following certain treatment protocols. So in a federal structure like India, there are multiple variations of um, the so-called medical uh, treatment protocols. Is um, remdesivir and ivermectin, and I think you did intervene uh, beneficially for Tamil Nadu recently, and the use of uh, steroids. Um, what is uh, a prescribed protocol? Uh, do governments look up to the WHO uh, for its recommendations on clinical treatment protocols? And uh, uh, is there overstating rational steroid use at all? So what we've tried to do at the WHO is to have what we call the living guidelines, which are evidence-based and they are updated um, regularly whenever there is a change in the available evidence. So based on that, we have made recommendations of, on a number of drugs. As you know, last year, there was a lot of interest in repurposed drugs like hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, ritonavir, we looked at interferon, beta, we looked at uh, remdesivir, and, and these were all tested in the solidarity trial, which was a, the second largest trial in the world. And then there were other trials like the recovery trial, which were also looking at drugs like steroids, dexamethasone, and a number of other drugs, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, ritonavir, they've looked at um, colchicine, at aspirin, at uh, monoclonal antibodies. And based on these trials, we update our guidance. As I said, it's, a, it's done by a group called the Guidelines Development Group, which is an independent group of experts that gets the evidence reviewed and then bases their recommendations on whether the drug is efficacious in terms of reducing mortality, or reducing the duration of hospitalization or reducing the severity of illness? Is it safe? Um, and then they also look, look at things like patient preferences. They look at, look at the equity aspects. Uh, so there is all of that analysis done. And based on that, so far we have only one drug that has a big impact on mortality and that is steroids or dexamethasone. But again, important to note that it only has an impact when it is given to people who are in hospital receiving oxygen. So it is given at the stage of the disease where there is inflammation, which is preventing the oxygen from flowing across you know, in the lung. And it's given to reduce that inflammation. So it's important to understand that this viral infection, COVID-19, has phases. The first phase is when the virus is replicating. Most people may, may have mild symptoms. This is the first week of the disease. At this stage, the only thing that could have an effect are some of the monoclonal antibodies that are now under development and some of the antiviral drugs, which are also in development for which we still don't have the phase three results, but they look promising. Monoclonal antibodies also look promising. Of course, there's a different issue with, with the cost and access to those. But they, they are showing some promise in early treatment, in the first week, because that's when you want something to act against the virus. In the second phase of the disease, which is usually starts after seven days or after 10 days, is when in some people, the inflammatory response starts attacking the body's cells and you start getting also the coagulation problems. You get... Uh, clots occurring in the lungs and in other organs. This is when steroids are helpful and also some immunomodulatory drugs like the anti-IL-6 inhibitors and also drugs which are which prevent uh, coagulation like heparin. And then you have the later phase which is the long COVID or the post COVID syndrome which occurs in a certain proportion of people you know, about 10% or so, where symptoms last for many weeks or months. And at that time, there is, we are still, there's still research going on as to what treatments are effective. So I think it's important for people to understand that the wrong drug given at the wrong time can actually have 
more bad effects than good. And so many of the drugs commonly being used now like doxycycline, azithromycin and ivermectin have not been shown to have any effect. In fact, WHO has provided a recommendation against the use of ivermectin except in clinical trials and also against the use of remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, et cetera. So uh, what is needed, I think, uh, in countries is to, uh, is to develop guidelines, national treatment guidelines that are evidence-based and that can be frequently updated and also that are relevant to the context in which they have to be used in the country. You know? so, the WHO makes guidelines for the whole world, but then countries can adapt and adopt them and implement them, depending on um, also things like the cost and benefit of various interventions. So that will be important to have so that then states can again use those. So ideally, this should be done at the national level so that every state does not have to do their own treatment guidelines.